We've been looking at the book of Joshua under the theme of uh, victory or success and uh, God's road to success may from times to time need a little reset. Uh, not that the Lord messes up, but uh, we do. We do. And uh, so one of the most overused cliches, I think, is the one of the definition of insanity. You know this, this cliche? Doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. <laughs> right? Well, Israel had just experienced at Ai a loss. And to do what they just did, again, would seem like to me the wrong thing to do. It was time for a new strategy. For a number of years, I worked in a ministry with uh, singles who were single again due to divorce, a divorce recovery program. And it amazed me how many thought that all they had to do is in the next relationship, do what they did in the last relationship and just do it harder. <laughs> so you're going to do what didn't work and just do that a lot harder and you can expect for that to turn out with a better relationship. Now, uh, if that isn't the definition of insanity, then I don't know what is. In fact, it prompted me, and by the encouragement of several people, uh, to actually say, we've got to come up with a different strategy for the people that we're ministering to. So we pulled together a program called Living Single Again. And Living Single Again was a program where we talked about how not to do relationships like you did in the past. Because that didn't work. So what you need to do is a relationship built upon the Word of God because God is the one who's designed all relationships. So if you'll do relationships God's way, uh, duh, you'll probably have a great success in your relationships. But if you don't do it His way and you keep doing what you've been doing, you're probably going to mess up all over again. And those that we watched and observed for about the 10 years that we worked in divorce recovery ministries, we would see those that said, well, I'm just going to do what I did before a lot harder they were reoccurring in our group. <laughs> they go out, mess up, come back. Go out, mess up, come back. It's only when you do a reset. And that's what I want to talk about today, a reset. In the book of um, Joshua, there's a reset that's required. The original mandate that God had given to the, the Israelites was in chapter 1, be strong and courageous. In fact, this mandate is so important that God repeated it a second time in the next, very, very next verse. Be strong only this time, he says, and very courageous. This is so important a mandate to God's people that he gives it a third time, just two verses later, be strong and courageous, but now he adds, do not be terrified or do not be afraid. Don't be afraid. When I'm afraid, I'm weak. Do you realize that? When, when you get afraid, you're weakened. He wants you to be strong, not afraid. And then the next part of this verse, he says, and do not be discouraged. Well, if I'm discouraged, then I'm not courageous. And if I'm courageous, I'm not discouraged. These are our opposites. He's telling us what to do and what not to do in this verse. This is the mandate. It's so important. He said, listen, I have given you the promised land, but you've got to go in and take it. You've got to do your part. I'll do my part. He goes on and says, listen, for the Lord your God will be with you everywhere you go. So if you do your part, I'm going to be right there with you all the way. I will give you victories over battle after battle after battle, but you've got to do your part. It's not just let go, let God. Well, if God really wants us to have the land, uh, he'll wipe them all out for us and we won't have to do anything. If, if God really wants me to have a good relationship, well, it'll just happen. This is the number one thing I faced with the, the, the single again people. Uh, they, they had no idea what they wanted in a relationship. This is what they thought. Well, when you're in love, you'll just know that this is what you need. You know, it's like, it, it's like shooting your arrow. Boom, it hits the wall and sticks in it, and then you go get a can of spray paint and paint a target around it. <laughs> I got a bullseye. You don't know what you want? You don't know what you want. Oh, duh, I'll just know what it is when it arrives. People go through life like that. God said, no, no, no. You need to know what it is I want for your life. That is the target. Whatever you do, whether you eat or drink, whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Do it all for the glory of God. 
1 Corinthians 10.31. So whether I'm dating or whether I got my, my physical health, my diet that I eat, whatever it is, everything in life, my finances, whatever it is, whatsoever you do, do it all for the glory of God. That's the mandate for us, just like they had a mandate. And God will be with you. They need to reset the mandate because they gotten off track is what happened. So in the very first verse of chapter 8, Joshua resets the mandate. Actually, the Lord does. The Lord then said to Joshua, do not be afraid. That goes all the way back to chapter 1. Hey, get back on track. Do not be discouraged. He's talking about reset, a reset. I'm not a big uh, video game player. I, my, my grandkids beat me, you know, because I, I, I'm just not into that. But for a while I was into chess, and so I had the chess app on my phone, and, and I would play the chess. And when I see that my phone was beating me, I'd hit the reset button. <laughs> I start all over. And then I discovered it had a backup. But I could, when I made a bad move, I could hit the backup and it would back mine up and then I'd make a better move. And eventually I could beat my phone. <laughs> all right? And, uh, but but it, it, life doesn't come with backups. It doesn't. When you say something mean or nasty to somebody, you realize you really can't take that back. It's out. It's out. It'd be nice if there was a backup. You could rewind that and pull that back in. But it doesn't. But what you can do is a reset. You can reset. The nation Israel uh, had made some major mistakes. From chapter 7, we know, I mean, earlier they had gone, they surrounded Jericho. They marched around, did this crazy strategy that God had given them for, for six days. We marched on one seventh day, seven times blew their trumpets, all shouted, and walls came down. They went up and conquered the land. When it came to Ai, they said, oh, listen, we, we got the success under our belt. We'll just go and, oh, listen, we don't need the whole army. We'll just take 3,000 men. And they went up and they had an experience, a terrible disaster. So now he says, listen, listen, you, God says to Joshua, you need to reset. You don't lean on your own understanding. You've got to do it my way. He says, take the whole army with you and go up and attack little AI. You think this is some little thing that, oh, you can do in your own energy? And look what happened. You failed. You failed. He says, for I have delivered them into your hand, uh, the, the king of AI and his people and all the city. L listen, you got to trust in me. Trust in me. You see, they needed to reset their strategy because the old strategy didn't work. First of all, in the previous chapter, it says they were unfaithful to the Lord. That's just the overall characteristics. And when we are unfaithful to the Lord, how in the world can we expect Him to bless our lives? They were unfaithful to the Lord. Second thing, they trusted in their own might. Hey, oh, listen, there's only 3,000 warriors. Look. Our 3,000 guys are better than their 3,000 guys. Let's take them up. Third thing, they defiled themselves by the previous battle. God had told them not to take of anything from the city. It was all totally dedicated to God. But Achan took some of the things. There was defilement by a hidden sin in the life. Defilement. Too often, we have a hidden sin in our life. That is that we, we know what it is. It's not like it's hidden to us and, uh-oh, I better find out what's wrong with me. But we know what it is and we're hiding it and we think we can hide it from God. And that's what Achan thought he could do. He could hide this, but it was exposed. But the, the battle was the thing that happened. It failed because he had sin in the camp in the midst of his life. As a result, the Lord was not with them. When they went up to fight at Ai, they, they fought in the energy of their own flesh, and they fell flat on their face. They failed. In fact, they failed so miserably, they were defeated, and 36 people died because the wages of sin is death, always, always. That was the old strategy. What they needed was a new strategy. They need to wipe the board clean and start out with a new strategy. He saw it says here that you shall do to Ai and its king as you did to Jericho. The new strategy, I believe, is really the same old strategy. It's a reset. The overall strategy is the same, but the details are going to be quite different. Quite different. Remember what he said? I, I framed the whole battle that took place at Jericho around this. You trust in the Lord with all your heart. All your heart. 
you trust in God. Not, don't lean on your own understanding. Don't lean on your own army. In all your ways, acknowledge him. You do it his way at his time, according to his plan. You keep silent when you're supposed to be silent. You shout when you're supposed to shout. You march when you're supposed to march. You stop when you're supposed to stop. You do it all according to his plan. You acknowledge him and what you're doing, and he will make your path straight. The walls came tumbling down, and they went straight into the city. God made the path straight. He gave them great victory. He says, no, but you're going to have... He says, listen, do, you're going to do to Ai just what you did to Jericho. Only this time, you may carry off the plunder and the livestock for yourself. I find this very interesting because the Bible says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Achan desired those Babylonian garments. Achan desired that silver. Achan desired that gold. And God said, no, that's mine. But Achan robbed God. He took it from God. He stole from God. God says, no, 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 no. Listen. Delight in me. Delight in me. Put me first. And I'll give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to me. Trust me. And I will go into action. I love that verse. When you trust the Lord, you commit it, you roll it all on God, you give it all to God, God will move into action. He said, but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. If Achan had only waited, do you see this? He saw those Babylonian garments, he saw that wedge of gold, and he saw that wedge of silver, and he had to have that stuff, he stole it and he took it. But if he had only waited to the next battle... He says, you can have all the plunder. Take all you want. Take all you want. We are such an impatient person. I, I mean, the people, we, we, we just, I want it now. I want it my way. And if I can't have it my way, we stomp and we throw a little temper tantrum at God. And God is saying all the time, listen, those who wait upon me, your strength will be renewed. You'll mount up with wings like eagles. You'll run and not be weary. You'll walk and not faint. You'll have great victory. Your life will, you'll have that life you really want. You just have to wait on the Lord. So, new strategy. The new strategy, in some respects, is the old one. Trust the Lord with all your heart. Lean out on your own understanding. and all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. Now, he's directing the path here a little differently. At Jericho, they marched around six days, seven days, seven times, and blew their trumpets, and the walls came, tum- came tumbling down. But he says, you shall do to Ai and its king as you've done to Jericho the king, except you may carry off the plunder and all the livestock. Set an ambush behind the city. So there was a planned ambush set up, the planned ambush. Joshua and the whole army moved out to attack Ai. They chose 30,000 of the best fighting men. What, 30,000 against 3,000? That's 10 to 1. Yeah, God says, hey, listen, you still have to trust me. You still have to do it my way. This time I'm telling you, you have to have more. The methods may change for God's working, but the message never changes. You trust in the Lord with all your heart. You trust. So he sent them out, and they set an ambush. They went behind the city. We're we're told they set an ambush behind the city. And then once it was in place, the AI doesn't know that it's there. So I kind of grade that out. They don't know that they're there. Because then the part of the planned execution of the strategy is this. That night, Joshua went into the valley. I don't know how he went because when the king of AI saw it, he saw that they went into the valley. And so it must be that they're carrying torches, marching down, getting ready, prepared. So, oh, he sees it. Oh, hey, guess what? They're coming at us again. So what does he say? He says, He and all his men of the city hurried up early in the morning and they went out to meet him in battle. I said, we're going to do just like we did the last time. We went out there and, man, we we slaughtered. We we took 36 of them. They took none of us. Man, we're going to do it all over again. So they go marching out in this execution of this plan. But Joshua was given instruction by the Lord to plan a retreat. Joshua and all, all, all of Israel, they let themselves be driven back. Oh, they were pretending as if they were losing the battle. And they're back in retreat. They fled towards the desert, and all the men of Ai, they all pursued after Joshua, and they were lured away from the city, which was now behind them. It was just then the planned attack took place. They left the city open, and they went went in pursuit of Israel, 
And then all the men that were in ambush, they rose up quickly from their positions and they rushed forward. They entered into the city and they captured it quickly and they set it all on fire. Here's the plan surprise that AI never had expected. The men of AI looked back and they saw the smoke rising from their city. Oh no. The Lord's strategy, I'm going to tell you something, the Lord's strategy always works. <laughs> so why would we lean on our own understanding? I don't know. When Joshua saw that the ambush had taken the city, he then turns around and they attack the men of Ai. Now what we have is a, the planned trap. This is the trap. They're in the squeeze. The men of the ambush came out also and they, they were caught in the middle. They're trapped. The Israelites are on both sides of them. And he cut them down, leaving them neither survivors nor fugitives. They had the planned victory. For Joshua did not draw back the hand uh, that held out his javelin until he had destroyed all who lived in Ai, just as the Lord had commanded. Great victory. Oh. But then everything that Achan had wanted is now available. But Israel, Israel did carry off for themselves the livestock and the plunder of the city, just as the Lord instructed Joshua. So Joshua burned Ai and made it a permanent heap of ruins, a desolate place to this day. They had reset the strategy, done it God's way, and wound up with great, great victory. In our lives, we, most of us, we make our own plans. And we get our wonderful plans put together and then we say to the Lord, Lord, bless my plan. Maybe we should be doing things a little bit more in reverse. Maybe we should be going to the Lord in prayer and saying, Lord, what is your plan for my life? Lord, what is it that you would have your servant do? Isn't that what I am, a servant? He is the master. He calls the shots. I tend to want to be a master servant. I, I basically want to tell him what I want to do, and buddy, you better bless it because I'm telling you, God, what I want to do. And God kind of laughs. He, he, and he says, uh, wait a minute, Dennis, are you God? <laughs> and the answer to that is absolutely not. Absolutely not. They needed a reset, and when they reset and they got themselves back on track of doing what God wanted them to do, they had great victory. Great victory. Great victory. I believe we can have that today. After this great victory, they made a reset of their commitment. Commitment. In fact, it goes on in the very, very next verses in, in Joshua chapter 8, says this. Then Joshua built on Mount Ebal an altar to the Lord. He built an altar. We need to uh, worship God when God gives us a spiritual victory, a spiritual uh, a battle that we've been facing and, and we're, we've conquered it in our lives. We need to build our altar and worship God and say, thank you, God for what you've done in my life. Thank you, Lord. You give God the glory. We're going to see in this passage here that that's exactly what they did. In fact, it says, they built that altar uh, to the Lord, the God of Israel, as Moses, the servant of the Lord, had commanded the Israelites to do back in Deuteronomy 27, 4 through 8. And I put it up there because this is so important in this text. God says this to, through Moses. And when you have crossed the Jordan and set up these stones on Mount Ebal, I, as I've commanded you today, coat them with plaster. They're supposed to set up some stones. Coat them with plaster. And then after that, he says, build there an altar to the Lord your God, an altar of stone. Do not use any iron tools on them. Don't chisel them. Don't, don't dress them. Don't make them nice and beautiful. I want them to be just naturally shaped Stone, don't put any of your effort into it. It's kind of like our salvation. It's not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. 
I can't bring anything. I can't make myself any better. Remember the old hymn, just as I am without one thing. Listen, just as I am. You get me like this. This is who I am. I come to you, Lord, just as I am. I'm not chiseling anything off. You, you get me with all the worst. You get me with all, all the, the bad. And, and you do the work in my life. And so they take these rough stones and they build them up into a heap and made an altar. And there he says, when you get into the land, you burn offerings, a burnt offering. A burnt offering is where the whole thing is consumed to God. It represents that, God, I'm giving you my whole life. I'm all yours. He so said, give your burnt offerings on it. Sacrifice, fellowship offerings, that you're now in harmony with me because you've had this blood sacrifice that was in, in your place. You should have died, but the blood sacrifice died just like Jesus died on the cross for us. He was the blood sacrifice. I believe in him, and so I get to go free. And he's saying, here, you need to give a thank offering. And we gave a thank offering this morning. I put my offering in the offering plate. And I said, thank you, Lord. I love you back because you first loved me. And, and I'm showing this is a part of who I am. I'm giving to you. I gave my thank offering. He says, sacrifice fellowship offerings and and you shall write very clearly on the words, all the words of this law on these stones. What law? The Ten Commandments, the book of Deuteronomy. He said, you write them all on that plaster, those two plastered stones. You write on them all the law of God. Now, I want to go see. You reset God's will. This is God's will for your life. You do it God's way. And then you thank him for the victory when it comes. They had to do a reset now on their worship. So he built it just like it was written in the book. He built his altar just like written in the book. Like I need to build my life just like it's written in the book. Like I shared to those in divorce recovery. Uh, you need a new plan for how you're going to do relationships because what you didn't do, what you were doing before didn't work and now you need to do a new plan. He's saying, that you get back to the book. Get back to the plan that God has designed. And if you'll reset your life to what God has set for your life, you'll have great victory. He says, and you worship. He says, build it according to what is written in the book of the law. An altar of uncut stones on which no tool has been used. And he says, and then offer to the Lord burnt offerings, just like it said in Deuteronomy, and sacrifice fellowship offerings. And then he says, there in the presence of the Israelites, Joshua copied all the law of Moses which he had written. He made a copy of it. Now, I got to tell you, in the ancient world, they have all these things called stelas. They're big stones where there's carved in these stones, uh, uh, usually in the palace of the king or there are different locations where it talks about the king's great battle victories. And it, they write really pleasant things about the king. Sometimes they embellish them just a little bit because the kings aren't always as nice as they say on the steel. It's a, but who wants to write something bad about the king? No, you don't. But instead here, setting up these steel is about, oh, Joshua, great leader and triumph in battle. They write the law of God. They write the word of the Lord. They give credit where credit is really due. God gave us the strategy. We were just the foot soldiers doing God's work. So we don't take the pat on the back. We don't take the credit. We give all credit to the Lord. So they set up their stealers there and they have the word of God. They have the law of God. They have the will of God written there for all to see that what took place was a victory because of God in their lives. The third thing that here, or the fourth thing is that not all Israel and the aliens of this uh, uh, and the citizens alike and all their elders and officials and the judges were standing on both sides of the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord facing those who carried it and the priests uh, who were the Levites. So the Le these priests, Levites, they were carrying the, the Ark. They stopped. They dropped it down. And, and all the nation gets half on one side of it, half on the other, half on the, uh, one mountain, one on the, going up the side of the other mountain. And, and there they put God in his place, in the center. He's the focal point. And he is the focal point of all worship. He is the focal point of our worship here. We want to honor the Lord Jesus Christ in all that we do, in all that takes place. There they were worshiping the Lord God. They give it, had given him his, his proper place. In some places in the Old Testament, that Ark of the Covenant is called the throne of God. God was on his throne receiving worship from his people 
just as Moses had told them to do when they got in the land. They were doing it. They did a little reset. There's a little reset here too in the Bible instruction. Half of the people stood in front on Mount Gezerim, the other on Mount Ebal, and Moses, as Moses the servant had told them to do, and he gave instructions to bless the people of Israel. They were doing, they were following the word of God to the letter. And God was going to bless them. Now the section that he's reading from, it says, and afterward Joshua read all the words of the law, the blessings and the cursing from chapter 7, 27, uh, following a couple of chapters. It's a section called the curses and the blessings. And, and it basically is this. If you obey what I say, I will bless you. And if you disobey, I will curse you. Later in the book of Deuteronomy, it sums it up like this. Behold, I set before you the way of life and the way of death. You obey the Lord, you live. You don't, you die. It's just that simple. The blessings and the curses of the book, they wrote them all out, man. He's got them all written out. And, and he's teaching, he's reading everyone. He's reading the word of God to the people so the people know what the will of the Lord is. There was not a word of all that Moses had commanded that Joshua did not read to the whole assembly of Israel, including the women and the children and all the aliens that lived among them. He is going through the word of God. Why? Why is he doing all this? Said in chapter one, remember what, the, the original mandate? He reset the mandate, reset the strategy, and now he's resetting the, the commitment. It says, do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be successful or you'll be prosperous and successful. They wanted God's success. They wanted it. Here's my final thought. Commitment to the Lord. Commit to the Lord whatever you do and your plans will succeed. Commit to the Lord. Commit your life to the Lord and whatever you do and your plans will succeed. I don't know about you. Maybe you need a reset in your life. Maybe you do. I don't know. There was a time in my life I needed a reset. I was a teenager. I was only 16 years old. And uh, I'd gotten together with two of my friends. One was a real close friend. The other one was a real shy guy that sat next to me in Spanish class because uh, his name began with a K. Last name, mine began with an H. And the way he laid out, he sat next to me. Never said a word. He was, so, he was a shy kid. One's name was Ray, there was Ron, and, and uh, Ray and Ron and I one evening went to a paint factory where Ron had worked for his uncle. He had a key, opened it up, we went in, we took a helmet in to paint it. And in the process uh, of it, we, we had to clean it, and cleaning it, we used this chemical, that, and we didn't turn the vat on on purpose, so it would fill up with all these chemicals, and we'd sniff them and get us really high. Hey, I was a, I was a Christian, and I knew this was wrong. And I kind of protested, but I gave in. I didn't, I gave in, I caved. I went, went, did what they said to do. And pretty soon, I'm, I'm as high as can be. And then all of a sudden, I blacked out. Boom. I, was, I don't know what happened after that, except for what I was told. What happened after that is they blacked out too, and the next morning, the owner, Ron's uncle, came to find three bodies lying on the floor. And... Uh, by the time we got to the hospital, two of them were declared dead on arrival. So that meant I was the only one alive, obviously, because <laughs> I'm here today. I was unconscious for a, a few days, and when I finally came to consciousness from, from my body, all these chemicals on me, uh, my father was leaning over trying to talk to me because I was p coming partly out of it. And just leaning over and talking and breathing off of me, he fell over the floor. <laughs> That's how much this had saturated my being, okay? And um, there I was when I finally really did come around and they, they told me what had happened. I knew right then that my life was more like Aiken's than it was like Joshua's. I knew as a Christian what was right, but I chose to do what was wrong. And it resulted not in 36 
just two friends dead. I needed desperately a reset in my life. And I did. Our pastor was out of town on vacation, so our youth pastor, youth minister, the, the, the sponsor we call him, came in and he prayed with me. And man, I poured out my heart to God in a reset. A reset. A reset. I confess my sins. The Bible says if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of all unrighteousness and purify and cleanse us and make us a pure vessel that he can use. And, and, and I, I made the reset. Reset. There's always consequences. And that doesn't mean the consequences are taken away. Listen, whatsoever man sows, that shall he also reap. You know, if, if, if uh, I've been an immoral person and I, I got a young lady pregnant and I'm praying, this, Lord, Father, forgive me for this immorality in my life. And, and the Lord would forgive me, but the consequences are still, she's pregnant. That doesn't take that away. The consequences are still there. I carried in my body the consequences for months because I couldn't walk. My legs had become paralyzed. My left leg was paralyzed. And so I had to go through physical therapy and I got to the point where I could walk but I could not feel my foot when it hit the ground. <laughs> it's the weirdest way to walk because you have to watch. I'm on the ground. And then you move your next leg. And, and I limped for a long, long time. Uh, it was my constant reminder that there was a consequence besides the death of my two friends there was a consequence in my own body. The Lord had forgiven me but there was a consequence to pay and that's the way sin is. Even when we're forgiven there are consequences that attend that wandering away from the Lord. I needed the reset in my life and I got the reset. And as time went on, and then now today you notice I don't, I don't limp. I avoid really cold weather because in cold weather my foot goes numb. And so I keep a heated blanket on my bed <laughs> almost year round because I don't want my foot. Okay, my foot. And I have one in the office at my feet because my, I got to keep my feet warm. And you know when I don't, it takes me back to the fact that I'm not the person I used to be. God gave me a reset. A reset. So that I could live my life for Him. Commit to the Lord whatever you do. Commit to the Lord your life. Place your life in His hands. Give it to Him. And your plans will succeed. Short little proverb. I believe it's true. I believe it's true. I don't know what it's in your life that you need, uh, need to reset. Only you know that. But you can do the reset today as we pray. Let's pray. Perhaps there's something in your life and you know it. You can identify it in your mind. You don't have to share it with me, but you say, yep, pastor, I need a reset in this area of my life. And you say, pray for me in this final prayer. Just lift up your hand real quick. Put it down. I'll see it. Yep. Yep. Someone else? Reset my life. Father in heaven, we pray for these hands that were raised. There's a reset. I pray that you'll do this, O Lord. Give them a heart where they just pour out to you as I did. Confession that I need you, Lord. Like we sang earlier, I need you. Every hour, I need you, Lord. I need you. Lord, give them the ability to do that Proverbs verse. Place themselves in your hand, your hands, so that their plans may succeed. Trust in the Lord with all our hearts. Don't lean on our own understanding. But in all our ways, acknowledge you, give you the credit, so that you can make our path straight. Do that now, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Father in heaven, we want to worship your holy name, not just in our song, but in our life. Reset to the mandate, your mandate, your strategy, and a commitment that is unfailing. Help us, Lord, do that, for we pray in the name of Jesus, amen.